If you've ever taken any programming classes, whether you were taking them online or you were sitting in a classroom, there's a very good chance that your teacher was using VS Code. And if you continued down that development path and you ended up working in a corporate environment, you probably again ran into a lot of people using VS Code or full on Visual Studio for their development environment. And this is probably why these two IDEs or code editors and IDEs combined have a 41% market share according to how often the download pages are visited from Google, which I guess that's a pretty good metric for measuring that. And you know, some schools and companies, they even get a little bit fascist with the IDEs that their employees and their students are allowed to use and they force them to use a particular one. And wouldn't you know it, most of the time people are being forced to use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. Now, I don't think that this popularity is necessarily a big conspiracy, right? There's some legitimacy to it. Uh, they are both feature-rich code editors, and of course, Visual Studio is a full-fledged development environment that's supposed to be convenient. Uh, VS Code is also an Electron app, which means one of its primary features is eating up all your RAM, because of course, that's something <laughs> that we all need done. So if you're not on a modern system with an ungodly amount of RAM, then you're probably gonna be better off sticking to a much less bloated text editor. But if you're running around with RAM capacities that are higher than some people's SSD capacities, especially from 10 years ago, then you're gonna be able to handle the bloat of VS Code. And you're also going to be able to handle any more bloat that you may want to add on to VS Code uh, because one of the most important features of it, the feature that everybody really loves about these editors are the extensions. There are so many available, many of which can actually help you increase your productivity. Uh, but if we look here in trending this week, we see not one, but two <laughs> chat GPT plugins. And let's see, let's scroll over one and see if we get any more. Oh yeah, here we go. Ask GPT for VS Code. Uh, trending even though it only has like 600 downloads. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, and I guess this one only has 600 something too. But man, look, we can't even make a video about an IDE these days without being bombarded with AI BS. But you know what? Hey, it's the hot new trend, right? AI, uh, especially chat GPT. And you know what? Microsoft is really embracing this. So it actually makes sense that uh, I guess they're going to put it on the trending this week page. But anyway, Moving past the uh, AI stuff, the cool heckin' chat GPT right in your code editor, uh, there are extensions to, well, for example, this is one I've used in um, VS Code before, or VS Codium, which, uh, spoiler alert, that's what this video is really about. This here will give you basically Vim commands in your uh, VS Code, absolute must, because once you start using Vim, there's no going back. Every time you open a text editor, you'll be typing JJ to try to scroll down. Happens to me every time I <laughs> have to use Nano. So yeah, this plugin is gonna be a must for pretty much any developer that has seen the light of Vim. Now, even though Visual Studio Code is a really popular editor that in some cases you're gonna be forced to use because maybe your school or company has some kind of extension pack that is only gonna work with VS Code, you know, made for VS Code that you're forced to use. But despite its popularity, it's probably one of the worst editors that you could ever use because, well, Microsoft is the company that created it. And like most big tech companies, Microsoft is deeply involved in harvesting user data and then using that to fuel their targeted advertising network. And of course, they also cooperate with law enforcement, giving up uh, user data for those purposes, helping the NSA spy machine, all of that really, all the spooky things that could be done with your data, Microsoft is involved in it. And sure, they aren't as deep into uh, the ad revenue as companies like Google or Meta, but they do still pull in about $18 billion a year from their targeted ad systems. And more importantly, that's a revenue channel that Microsoft is actually planning to grow in the future to try and get back on top, along with them turning Bing into an AI search engine to compete with Google Search. And VS Code collects usage data from its end users via telemetry, just like all other Microsoft products. 
And you know, in the documentation, sure, Microsoft claims that the data it collects is just to improve the product, right? Just to improve uh, Visual Studio Code in this case. So in theory, none of it would be used for advertising. However, all of the telemetry, all of the code that does the data gathering from VS Code is closed source. So you just have to trust the big tech company by its word alone that they are not spying on you and they are not key logging everything you type every time you run VS Code. And well, I think it would be really silly to give that much trust to these companies. But luckily, there is a solution to those of you that are using VS Code, which is VS Codium. So this is a fully open source, free Libre version of VS Code. Now, this is possible because VS Code itself is mostly open source. Uh, the term that's actually used for software like this is open core, because basically the core, like the most of the program is indeed open source, but then there's a lot of proprietary stuff bolted on, like the telemetry. Same thing that we have with Google Chrome. They harvest a lot of data. You know, Google, they're probably one of the uh, biggest data gathering companies out there right now. Uh, so they gather a lot of data with Google Chrome. All of that telemetry, which is bolted onto the open source Chromium. Now, there is one potential drawback with VS Codium that might keep some people from using it. And that is the fact that some proprietary extensions that are specifically designed to only work with VS Code are not gonna work with VS Codium. Uh, the most notable extensions are the VS Coded uh, Remote Development Extension and also the debugger that is provided with Microsoft's C Sharp extension. So if you really do need those things, then I guess you're just gonna have to make peace with Microsoft Telemetry, but I would imagine that you would have already done that if you're looking to become a C-sharp dev. Uh, but yeah, this is fully open source, VS Codium, fully open source, no telemetry. It is available for uh, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and it can also be installed with Homebrew, it can be installed with Winget, and it's also available in the Nix package manager, Nix uh, repositories. So regardless, of the operating system that you're using, you can get it in a sane way with a package manager. Very important. No need to deal with snaps or <laughs> random EXEs that are being downloaded from malware sites that hackers use Google to advertise and put at the top of your search results. With VS Codium, you have access to the open VSX uh, registry, which contains open source extensions that have been ported to or imported from VS Code to VS Codium. So right now it looks like there's 2,469 extensions available in here. And that is in addition to all of the stuff that VS Codium already supports since it is a pretty uh, feature rich code editor, text editor. So I think it's safe to say that for like 99% of the people out there, you know, all the people that are making up this really large market share of VS Code and uh, VS Codium, they could switch, or VS Code and Visual Studio, they could switch to VS Codium with no issue at all. Almost 2,500 extensions are in here, so everything you need can be done the FOSS way. So try out VS Codium if you're currently using VS Code, if you're already happy with something like your Vim setup or your Emacs setup, there's no real need to switch to this. Um, I would probably still prefer those style of editors to myself because they're much more lightweight. I mean, despite me having like 128 gigabytes of RAM, uh, but what I really like about them is that they're portable. Uh, they're available in both TTYs and GUI environments, whereas VS Code, VS Codium, that's really only gonna be available in a GUI environment. Uh, so yeah, think of it like, I guess, the harm reduction version of VS Code. If you're addicted to the proprietary nonsense that is VS Code, if you're forced to use it, then you can think of this as like your methadone <laughs> to get you on the path to free and open source sobriety because proprietary software is bad for society.